Alrighty. Okay, calling the meeting to order at 5.16 p.m. on Wednesday, December 7th. Present, we have Russell French, Lee Whitcomb, Roxanne Parent, and Laurie Lucier, and Veronique Blanchard. And uh, she is uh, with us through Zoom. So the first order of business is to review the minutes. Mm -hmm. Veronique has the Zooms. I cannot do that because I was not online for the entire meeting. I was out of town. Right and saw parts of it, but not the entire thing. Mm -hmm. So it's between- uh, I'm not sure what this means. It says, what? questioned why property card, not on assessor's page yet. Because you questioned me why the property card was not on the assessor's website page yet. That was part of the meeting. There wasn't, we couldn't follow the agenda. So it was just what we actually talked about. That was one of the things we talked about. We want to put up town. Um, question whether we want to put up the Tyler card when, when we make a switch to Patriot. What does that mean? These were all things we discussed at the last meeting because we couldn't do normal business. These are all things that we had discussions about at the last meeting. Yeah, but I know it was a month ago. Was whether, if we put a card up, whether you wanted to put the Tyler card up or whether you want to wait put and a put Patriot the, Wait and up. put a Patriot card Oh, this is on, oh, oh we this were was, talking about the Zoom. Thing. Right. Oh, well, that, I mean, this I was, was just, just trying, trying to, like, what it yeah, said. this was the last time we were together, which was like a month ago. I know. I'm just trying to figure out what it said, and it didn't say anything about the Zoom meeting. I'm thinking, what does that mean? Western, whether we put a Tyler card or switch to Patriot. So I'm not sure what that was referring to, the way it was written. Gotcha. So that's all. I just want to make it clear. Okay. Do we have a motion to accept I, the minutes as written? I make a motion. Okay. Agree? Okay. Yes. Second. 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 Okay. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in agreement. Say aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Two to zero, accept it as written. Okay, next is checking in on you with your training requirements. Okay. And we know that today you made- Well, I was trying to log in. Yeah. Couldn't log in mm -hmm. and I needed a password. So I finally got the password and I'll be able to log in now and do it. And, sure. um, but I do have a question. Um, you forwarded me, which we were confused as to me not being able to, because I'm not, I haven't passed the course yet. Right. But, and I was under the assumption that I had a year or so to do it. The, the maximum period in which you have to, to do that is up two years. Right. To complete the course. To complete the course. Right. And as soon as you've done the first four uh, successfully, and now it is it records in Gateway now. Yes, when I you have that. successfully completed a module, so we yes, do have something I saw that. to look at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's new to us. But it, however, but in um, the letter, be able to sign financial matters. Okay, but the question it says in the letter that uh, was sent to me in yep. July, it says if you fail to meet this requirement, this is passing the thing, yeah, the course within the two years, you will receive a disqualification letter from our division. Mm -hmm. Please note that the DLS will not accept any documents with the signature if a disqualified from a disqualified assessor. So I haven't been disqualified. No, no, but you haven't done. No, I haven't been disqualified. Right, you're so, disqualified if you don't finish it at, by the end of your the the time you, the time allotted. I'm sure that won't come into the picture at all. But you're not qualified yet to sign. It just says if you receive the disqualification letter, it, it just kind of... Yeah. At the end of two years, right? if you haven't completed it, right? they then send a disqualification letter. Right. Yeah. I got that. Yeah. But it doesn't say anything about in between the two years. There's... Those first no, four chapters. Right. The first four chapters are necessary for you to be able to sign things. Okay. But it, and then I if mean, you were disqualified at the end right. of two years... I believe that might have a retroactive effect on what you might have signed. Is that what it says? No. Okay, I didn't. I mean, I it didn't doesn't even that. say anything about that's fine. Doing the first four, 
Well, that's the word we had from the Department of Revenue that that's what you need to right. be able to sign financial matters. And Veronique and I talked to two yes. separate people back a month ago. Right. Right. So and we're good. I with know that. we talked about it, but mm -hmm. I'm just reading what was sent to me. Mm -hmm. I don't I think that's just letting you know that, you know, you've got two years to do it. And if you don't, you're it's just whatever you did before anything you might have signed between finishing chapter four and the end of that two the years two year is going to have to be voided out and redone mm -hmm. and signed by the other assessors. Okay. But mm -hmm. yeah, it just it doesn't it's not clear. And I just want to make sure. Because no one said that to me when I got into the position here. Well, that that letter is intended to, to explain it, yeah. And again, first time we had a new assessor since Russ yeah. fifteen years ago, yeah, where they didn't do all that then, right? <laughs> and I think we did, we, we did have to. You did it in person. We had to, yeah, do it live. Well, yeah. live, whatever you want. Right, live. you had to go to to the class. The class, yeah, and. I remember that mm -hmm. you had to pass. It kind of gave you a quiz at the end of each class. Yes, which I imagine. Well, that's if, like if the modular to each module. Mm -hmm. what yeah, you might guess. Yeah, yeah. There's ten of them. Mm, that sounds right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So you're into it now. That's what I'll on a roll. Yeah. Terrific. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Invoices. We do have a couple of invoices here. We, our next item is new mail and invoices. And we have one for cartographic technologies. There are two invoices, I should say, here. One having to do with the new modules that we got for the website, and the other being uh, extra $105 for extra buildings that we had put on the map for last year, new, new structures and so forth. So if you would review and initial those two uh, invoices, then I'll sign the top. This second well, one. Can she do that? Yeah, can I do that? Um, oh, no. That, yeah. Can she do it for in? No. No, that's right. Well, just, she, can, sorry. she can initial the, I mean, she's not them. signing and in, initialing the invoices saying that she agrees with them isn't signing a. That was supposed to be on valuations on something. Right. It, it, yes. It, it's this. That, it had nothing to do with. This is administrative and in-house. Yeah. She's not, yeah. she's not signing the actual bill schedule. And she's I want to be, with the be sure that you're aware of what's being paid. Mm -hmm. So yeah. am I signing this or not? Initial the invoices. Right. That's yeah. a, I'm that's the one who has to sign the authorization. That's administrative. I'm the one who signs the authorization. We have one with W.B. Mason. Done. Yeah. What was our $5.99 from them? That was your, I think that was your oh, little planner. Oh, yes. Yes. My planner for next year. Yep. My calendar. And then Mohawk Office Equipment is our annual um, maintenance fee on the Kiosera. And we're still doing public technologies. We're based, still based on 38,000 copies a year, and the price hasn't changed in several years. I need to turn that out also. I'm not going to do that. Oh, okay. there. <laughs> So I will go ahead and authorize these to be paid. Thank you. Hmm. We can just put everything in a big fat file and I'll mm -hmm. go through and separate tomorrow morning. Yes, as you can see, we have you got a lot of stuff. We have a lot to do. Yep. Start file over here. Yes, please. Um, I don't know if that's considered a mail. Outside. Doesn't much matter. Um, <laughs> we have a notice that's from Roy uh, Bishop. As you remember, we had asked him if he would come up and do our three houses, value our three houses as of January 1 or 4 January. <laughs> and he said, Yes, he can come anytime after February, uh, after the 11th of December. So, um, sure, anytime after December 11th. What three houses are we talking about? Yours, mine, and his. Oh, who asked him to do that? We had talked about it at several, a couple of meetings where we said that we would 
consider getting in an independent appraiser to do our three houses so that none of us were determining the value for each other's. And it would be a completely independent situation from a competent, licensed, mm -hmm. certified appraiser. Oh, well, I don't remember that. Well, we, we talked about minutes. it. Oh, yeah. It's in previous minutes. We oh, talked, yeah. I'll look, check my minutes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So I'd like to let him know about that. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that we still feel we'd like to have done in order to... Well, it, it, it eliminates any... Any question any, about any of us influencing their own values. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. It, it, yes. That's, yes. We would have to agree to accept whatever he says. Well, is that something we could all go... Because uh, as a learning mm, you know, new assessor, can we go and... To see how that would be an assessment. That I think it would be up to him. That would be up. That'd be up to Roy. I mean, you'd be there for yours, so you'd well, see course. how he did I yours. That, but there's nothing. Why yeah. wouldn't it be available that we could go to yours and yours and mine? He might like to work alone. I don't know. We'd have to ask him about that. But um, he has worked in Conway. He knows our market. He knows the sales in Conway, mm -hmm. and he has decades of experience, and uh, mm -hmm. he's certainly been on the state's list of accepted appraisers for many, many, many years. Yep. Works in a number of towns. So, have you thoughts about it? Yeah, I mean, I know if we're anytime after the 11th. After right? the 11th. Yeah, should we be thinking January? Okay, because I got a trade show all next week. 13, 14, 15. Okay. I'll be back on the mm -hmm. 16th. But the process would be okay by you? Yeah, I don't have the problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Kate? She's co-owner of the house. I'll have to see. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. How about you, Rusty? That's great, but I would like to go to everybody's also and see what he does. See how he does it. Well, we'll see how our families feel about it. Yeah. Yep. Um, my family is good with him coming. But I would ask them if if it was, you know, how they felt about other assessors coming. So, okay, I will follow up on him with that. That yes, we are interested. Uh, preferably after the 18th, then. That would be that next Sunday. Yeah, I'm back on 16th. Okay. So... We can't do it in January? We can. Different. I'll find out from him. That would just be said, better than because I got week holiday before, stuff. The week before Christmas. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know it. Um, I wrote to him, you know, saying, "Would you be available to come up sometime close to January one and value our three assessors' houses?" Mm -hmm. And so it can be after. Mm -hmm. Yep. Would that be better for you? Do you know what your show, your travel schedule is for the early January? I don't have much first couple of weeks. Then okay. We, then we get a couple more at the end of January. How's that for you? Yeah, yeah. After December is better. Okay. Put we'll down the first through the 14th, maybe, is a question mark. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. Um, I'll get back to him on that. We've also had an interesting notice of Kim Goddard was a member of the Agricultural Commission which is sort of inactive right now, but she had had a, uh, a message from Albert, Albert Averill of the USDA Agricultural Land Easement Program and possibly introducing that in Conway. And he's the agri one of, representing the agricultural commissioners uh, for the state and is our local representative he had previously served in related fields for many years. And the purpose of this program is to help towns recognize important farmlands at the local level and to ensure all applicable lands may be considered for NRCS farmland preservation funding into the future. Uh, farmland of local importance is a list of soils suited for crops, but not listed in the regular soil survey and maps as prime farmland 
unique farmland or farm, farmland of statewide importance. I mean, certainly here in the area, we have our, our valley farmland that would fall under that category. Uh, it's important because the NRCS Agricultural Land Easement Program, which funds farmland preservation, requires that at least 50% of the land is important or farm soils. By recognizing additional lands suited for crop production, more farm landowners may have a chance, a choice to keep that land in agriculture. And he's going to be speaking to the selectmen uh, next Monday night. On the and 19th. I I go to that meeting. Is that when is it? The 19th. 19th. I'm sorry. <laughs> Two weeks. Thanks. Thanks, Veronique. Mm -hmm. So it's simply something that is maybe coming around and uh, might be of interest if you'd like to attend it on the 19th. But we have this information here about it. Now, other mail. Well, we're going to get rid of this warrant first. This is a new motor vehicle warrant um, that just came out for us to sign. <laughs> This is warrant number five for this year. Six. Six? Oh, Six. yes, it is. And um, generally, the December one is, is the last one of the year, but we'll have a couple of more in January, at least one more for transactions that happened in December. Am I supposed to sign this? Mm -mm. No. Uh, this, uh, yeah, you can't, but that's what it is. The excise tax bills. Yep. Mm -hmm. Back, um, let's go over this bills. What was on the very final page? Mm. Total totals on the very final page. <laughs> Just the usual. <laughs> Yes, just the parking slides set now. Uh, we did make a new purchase, bought a second monitor, and that will enable me to be able to have the valuation program on one and have whatever I'm working on, whatever papers you know I'm working on on the other, instead of having to bounce back and forth continually on one monitor. It's going to be very good. It came in at $159, You're and welcome. Veronique is going to have that taken out of the IT budget which is, is excellent for us. Yes. Thank you, Bernie. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. The, um, let's see, we'll get into that. That was abatements. Well, review of abatement and exemption applications. Exemption applications are still not all in. We do like to review all of them at one time because reviewing individuals' private financial information is something we don't want to remember. And if we do them all in one night, they're less fresh in our mind. We get them mm -hmm. done all at a time. Mm -hmm. So we will probably hold off until they've all come in in mid-January. Did you That's ever find my application? I did. Yes, you did. did. Mm -hmm. Yep, it was where I was keeping the applications before Lee changed my system. Because I was keeping him locked in the folder in my drawer, and then she changed the system. Mm -hmm. We also have, with regard to personal exemptions, the overview by Kathleen Cl Kathy Cleary, and the, um, the slides presentation that she did at that September meeting down in Holyoke. And so I haven't read these through completely yet, 
but I'm going to go through and make sure if there's anything new or different or whatever that we're completely up to date on this information. Um, and what's that on? These are personal exemptions. Oh, personal exemptions. So the senior low income, blind, veterans. Ah, uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. All those. That was the on what the community uh, preservation uh, fund. That was what uh, was on that. Of course, we were going to go. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We also, the MAAO has started putting out their newsletter again, which is great. They stopped during COVID. And it's always been a very informative uh, publication. And Legal Corner this year, uh, this month, talked about solar energy systems. The state has made several different uh, changes in what's happening with that. One is increasing the capacity on a residential property from one from 1.05 or 5% higher than what the house uses to they'll allow up to 25% higher than what the house uses. So that will be coming into effect. Also, they've recognized a new category called agrivoltaic. And it basically speaks to things like having farmland with vegetable crops or grazing or something like that under solar arrays. And that that is now an acceptable use. And they will have to remove the farmland from chapter 61A protection mm -hmm. if, it is, if it is in it. And... Well, don't they have to do that anyway? They're going to put some well, we have it hasn't, it hasn't come in, up in Conway at all. Yeah, I can so we have not see our farmers detail. putting solar yes. panels over their cows no, and then taking it off of uh, a taking a chapter. It out of chapter. Yeah, that unless you're you do unless, see things unless like, you're doing like, like these lease. these you know covered parking lots, right? And the farms are starting to do things like that in loafing areas where they're putting a roof of solar panels over. Right, but they're probably leasing the solar panels to a company and Whatever. making up the difference of what they're losing. By taking their land out of chapter, maybe, but they must be making it, money on it. It's to, going to bring to in know. the question of of how much we can value and tax to whom. Yeah. Well, we still can't tax so you know, other than no. But if so the land is if the land is transferred into an industrial use or a commercial use, whichever one it is. What if they're just putting up the solar array for their own personal? Well, then that's a totally different situation. But this is a commercial or industrial application here. The um, This goes into the details on it. It is, as I say, not something that we have, have seen yet. The applicants must develop an agricultural plan in consultation with the UMass Clean Energy Extension. And it must be submitted as part of the application. And the proponents cite that this provision in claiming that there is now greater protection for the agricultural use since deviation from the agricultural plan will cause disqualification in much the same way that deviation from an approved forestry, forestry plan can cause disqualification from chapter 61. So it's getting more detailed and maybe it's something we'll see come to Conway. I think it'll be an interesting topic at uh, regional meetings. In uh, if we start having county meetings again, it'll be a good thing to discuss with other towns. So we have information there. To make our farm more endurable. Yeah. 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 Well, it's a shame they use a lot of farmland to put up. Yeah. Yes. Now, now it's going to be over. The, but the cows aren't going to get any natural sunlight and the grass oh, is plenty of. But then the, and the grass underneath it isn't going to grow properly because it's not going to be getting that out. Well, they're not going to put a full roof situation over any large area or out in the field, I shouldn't think. But if you had a loafing area where they're on concrete anyway, on their way coming into the barn, that could be a, one possible use of it, location for the it. milk will be charged. Yes. Yes, ionic milk. Ooh, busy milk. <laughs> the dairy of the future. Yeah. Could raise a bunch of chickens. That's right. That's right. You don't okay. need a big sky high one. You could just do the low. Right. Go underneath them. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, yeah, like the one they have in Sunderland. Yes. The chickens don't care. That's right. Exactly. That's a good egg. 
good example of this, actually. Yeah. Okay, next is begin review of abatement applications. We're holding the exemptions, so we'll begin review of the abatement applications. Our first batch here is ones that are pretty much automatic in that they're created because possibly of an error. Uh, for example, two personal property accounts were billed even though they were less than $10,000. And so we'll start with those first. So the, just, yeah, the top two. The top two. And where's that supporting data? Mm -hmm. I Remember have for I these. Said it, said it. First yes. Cost of supporting data. Right yes. Okay. Here. here it is. Perfect. This is just. This is. This is. Them. Yep. I told them. This, these are my two emails to QDS, to the billing company, and JM saying take these accounts off. They are listed as inactive. And that shows right here inactive and under. $10,000. Then they were billed anyway. They were billed anyway. This one's still listed as inactive. So I followed up by saying, when we're editing, get those out of there. And these are my emails from October. Uh, both were early off first half of October before bills went out. Mm -hmm. So I did try, but they went through anyway. So they simply are abated in full because they never should have been billed. Mm -hmm. Hey, Veronique, I guess it's not the Wi-Fi that's the problem. Oh, dear. <laughs> we might have lost her. No, she's, well, no, she's there. Okay. I'm here. Sorry, I was muted. Um, So it just froze on you? It just crashed. Zoom crashed. It crashed, but it's still recording. Okay. Yeah, I it started recording when I opened it back up, but it completely crashed. So I guess it's not the Wi-Fi. Wow. <laughs> well, that's a... <laughs> I guess that's good to know, but we still needed the boosted Wi-Fi, right? So oh, yeah, oh, absolutely. Definitely. definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's either got to be the laptop or the owl. Yeah. Uh, the next two are to the same party who had separated a piece of land off this year and sold it. And so as of January 1, it was not separated off. I had started an account as a placeholder for the new piece of land. And it went ahead and got billed. So we're going to, and this was billed with the lower acreage. So we're going to abate both and do a um, revised bill to the owner seller. Here's our correspondence on this. It's two separate bills for us. No.
You don't have to clip them back together then, because mm -hmm. I'm going to pull them all apart tomorrow oh. anyway for copying and okay. bringing over. And... All right. Uh, this is one that it's an application. It was applied for. Those didn't need it because they were errors. Um, actually, this one didn't need an application because it was an error. Also, a piece of land sold in town and It was two the parcels. purchase was two parcels, two abutting parcels. It previously had been billed two separate parcels, but he bought them together to be one. So he ended up getting a bill for the two together and for one of them alone. So again, we're going to abate the bill for the two together. No, oh, the, the one alone. I'm yes. sorry, the one alone. <laughs> and he keeps the bill for the two together. So we're all set there. Uh, this is what shows the two duplicate bills. And the different acreages. He bought the 6.24. And the email that we sent to him um, saying what we would do about it. So we have to sign both the application. In this case, I need to Ask for a motion to abate. A motion to abate. Okay. Um, Jesse and Elizabeth Williams. Yep. Okay, bill number 219, abated in full. So I heard a motion and a second. I didn't hear the eyes. Uh, Any further discussion? Well, I don't. Okay, eyes. I, okay. I don't know if I was supposed to do that because I'm not signing anything. Well, no, you're, she but do you have you any questions or discussion? No. Okay. No. Okay. I, you say aye. I say aye. aye. Thank you. <laughs> okay. There's that. Oh, don't put it back in. Just put it in pile. Because I'll have to take it all apart when you back. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the next one is a piece of land uh, way out in Buckland line. It, it crosses over to Buckland and so forth. It was sold this spring to a, an exempt organization. So they do not, um, so it's exempt in full for the entirety of Fiscal 2023. So um, they already apportioned the tax, I believe, at closing for the part of the year. Mm -hmm. And that the uh, owner paid the, for the part of the year that they owned it. And then the rest apparently was dealt with. Mm -hmm. So we have this one. Um, this is the reference for the deed. And what are they exempt for? It is a sportsman's land, national land trust that I believe their purpose is to maintain healthy woodlands uh, for education. habitats. Education. Education, possibly yep. some hunting. Yep, controlled hunting, I believe. Mm. Yep. And they have chapters in a number of different states. Yep, so <laughs> this was an automatic one. You have to go down or not? Sure, we can. No, we don't need to. We can. <laughs> Another one that should not have gone out, basically. We don't have a way to mark an account inactive on real estate. You saw that in personal property, there's an inactive checkbox. Mm -hmm. There is not one in real estate. Well, and so real estate doesn't go away. No, but if you want to put in a placeholder account for next year mm. and have it marked, have it be inactive for this year, 
we can't do that. The only thing I've found is that in the, on page one, they have their, the entries, they have a place where you choose between taxable or exempt. There's also a blank line. And I'm going to play with that and see if the blank line works as an inactive situation. And also asking about it. Uh, this is from the Bonifaz, um, our friends the Bonifazes on Maple Street. They had surveyed off a parcel last year in August of 21. And it is not going to be a house lot. That was not the intended purpose at all. It was more in the interest of estate planning. So once we got that sorted out, instead of coming in as a new house lot with the one acre, one acre premium, it will come in as adjacent backland instead. So we have the communication with him and a copy of the survey, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and everything else. And how does that work? We just take his word for it or? If it goes on the market, it gets hit with a house lot. But so many people have adjacent. Right now it's a garden. Yep. Does it have road frontage? No. Nope. It does. Does it? Yes. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And it's separate. At that point, it had 288 feet. Did it? I didn't think it did. Yeah. But he since has, has surveyed off another lot, mm -hmm. leaving a large back lot. Mm -hmm. And the, what was the old, I think it was an old gravel bank as mm -hmm. a third lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that happened this year. Right. Yeah, so it is, um, in many cases, we have adjacent back land until such time, even if it's a falls in the qualifications of the buildable, mm -hmm. until such time as something is done to show that it's being built. Um, and that's applying to a lot of people uh, in town now. So, we have our calculations here. We have his application. Um, I printed out a copy of his record card as billed with that value on it and a copy yeah. of the, In the survey yeah. showing the remaining acreage at that time and the date of the survey and then a copy of the property as calculated. That's, in other words, what I'm recommending we use as the abated value. Okay. So did he have deeds made up for all this? Mm -hmm. No, there's no separate deed. Oh, okay. Yeah. No separate deed. Mm -hmm. So I move that we abate bill number 120, taking off the house site and abate the value from its prior 136900 to 50,200 as adjacent back land. That's my motion. Second. Second. Any more discussion, mm -hmm. questions? Okay, sign that one. Could I just see that? I haven't, heard, I haven't heard the eyes. Oh, aye. that's right. Aye. All aye. in favor. Aye. Aye. Sorry, gotta have it. That's right. Oops. I'll go to that one as well. Uh, I'm going to hold on to the Pearson Cortez one, Laurie, until we hear from JM. Yeah, like I said, I I, yep. I prefer to have it ready and yep. just write void it's, it's, on it yep. and not do it. Oh, all right, we can do that. I yeah. mean, it's just yeah. This is an interesting one. Uh, Registry-wise, these folks own 
a tiny little piece of land that ooches, ooches over into Conway uh, from their Goshen land. They also ooch over into Williamsburg. But at any rate, they gave the whole thing to the Franklin Land Trust back in uh, November last year. However, because it's in multiple towns, it did not get indexed at the registry to Conway. It got indexed to multiple towns. And we never knew about it. Oh. So they phoned when they got their bill for a dollar and 72 cents for the year. And <laughs> truly, and said, um, we gave it to the land trust last fall. And so I was able to find the deed. And it's 1121. And it carefully described it and gave us some good information. So this is land that has gone to exempt. Uh, in the amount of $1.72, the value is $100, the Conway value. And um, I don't know if Jan can even refund $1.72 or how she wants to handle it. Because if we tell her that we're going to evade it, uh, then she can, if she has to follow her ruling, the ruling of you can't write a check for under $5, <laughs> <laughs> that's hers to deal but, with, not but, ours. But she still needs the paperwork to go. She needs the paperwork, it right? The system, right? So, so this will give her what she needs to deal with, I think. So I move to delete uh, to abate in full bill number nine forty three to Pearson Cortez for their one hundred dollar value land over on the outskirts of Conway. Second. Second. Okay. okay. Any further discussion or questions? Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. They've owned that for so many years. It was interesting, but they live over in Palmer. This is the one that was down on that little sort of back road. Uh, right. It's it's off Wing Hill Road. Yeah. You go way out there where the town line kind of digs in and makes two or three. Yep. And um, one of the things that I found with that is that there may be the piece that they show as being in Goshen up coming up to the Conway town line, according to one survey, does not come all the way to the town line. Or it comes over it, I'm sorry, it comes over it and is owned by WD Coles. So I have to look into their deeds and see if they do own a 50 foot strip along the town line that we didn't previously know about until I had to look at that survey, which was back in the 70s, I think, or 80s. So we look at it. Um, the last one to deal with for tonight is the Church of God camp over in uh, on Roaring Brook Road, the northern section uh, that has the partially finished cabin and the old ranch house and the um, gated entryway. Uh, not the New England Church of God camp, the big one with the larger buildings and the chapel and all. This is the one that he doesn't do anything. With it, you know? uh, right. Well, he came in on the 16th and brought in his application. And we did in the spring. Okay, him for this year is being exempt. And Lee and I took a road trip. But we immediately took a ride over. And this is our agreement to give him a year. We did take a ride over. And the lawn has all been cut. A lot of the grass has been cut down. They have started putting siding on the building. They have... Um, what else had they done? They made another little shed type thing. There were a couple of events there at the end. They of did have a couple of events this year. They've been recorded. Yes. Did we have a recording. He gave us, happened? yes, he gave us, uh, what did he give us? A copy he, of the. He gave us the flyers for yes. the events, and it was obvious that there had been wood burning going on with, yes. where the, the outside stove and fire pit area were, and there was a boat in that mm -hmm. puddle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, they'll, they'll, they'll bond. <laughs> yeah. So that will be for consideration for next year's qualification as an exempt property. But in the spring, we did qualify him for this year's exemption. Okay. I've also been in touch with the state uh, at 
both the Secretary of State and the Attorney General's offices, seeing what is required for a religious group to file. And I haven't heard back yet from the AG's office. Um, Jim Crowley at uh, municipal law, municipal finance law, sorry, says there are no annual filing requirements for a religious organization in connection with a church parsonage or church hall. And but this is neither. No, no. Um, and he sent me, you know, the usual information that they, we send out as exemptions for religious and charitable. And he also included chapter seven of the manual, which we had seen and said, please give me a call uh, if we have any further questions. So um, what I had written was, what are the state filing requirements versus suggestions? of a chapter 180 religious organization, which is how that one is filed with the state. Mm -hmm. Are they annual or periodic? And um, so we're in, in good touch with him. And it sounds like they do not have to do annual reports to the Secretary of State of the Commonwealth. I think that's changed because we used to check for that and that was a qualifying factor. But he is up to date on them now. So, so it, it is not required. It now. sounds like it is not required. Yeah. But I'm still interested in hearing back from the Attorney General's office. But so, we do have it here in writing from Jim Crowley, who's. So, so because there was an application attached to this. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I'm sorry. So I move. To grant full abatement to tax bill number 30 to the Church of God, I follow Jesus in Conway, Massachusetts, which has a part time recreational camp on Marine Brook Road. Do I have a second? A second. Okay. Any further questions or discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Very good. Fairly sizable amount. It is. What's that? I didn't it is. It. It's three thousand and something. Four thousand. Four thousand dollars. Forty-four. Forty-four. Forty-five hundred dollars. Yep. In this past several years, when he has. Don't forget the summaries. Right. I know it had nothing going on there. Was he uh, getting it? He was getting billed. Was oh, he was. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, he had said it was a bit of a struggle to. Pay them, but he and Jan together. worked it out. He and Jan worked it out, and uh, mm -hmm. I double checked the numbers many, many times. Yes, yeah, I know. Yeah. Then we have the summaries here. This amounts to fourteen thousand six hundred eleven dollars and fifty five cents. Well, for all of those. Right? For all of those abatements. Mm -hmm. We currently have about $60,000 in the overlay, so we're just fine there. Mm -hmm. There we go. Mm -hmm. And we can move on to new listings. I know you started to speak about one of these last meeting. I heard that a little bit. Malcolm's house was withdrawn from the market. I did find that out. Ooh. It stayed on the market about a month and then was withdrawn, but I haven't heard why. Mm -hmm. He might have decided to wait for the spring for the busier market. That could be. I don't know. Maybe he has somebody who's interested in buying it privately. Yeah. Maybe he has. Yeah. We will find out. There's another one in town. What's the one on Williamsburg Road? Out there. That's been out there for that's been out on the market for a while. Oh, is it? Yep. That's the old Percy Culver farmhouse. Yep. Yep. This, I believe. Have you heard anything about an auction for Wildside? Not yet. No. I haven't either. Wonder it's what's going on up there. Where, where did I see her the other day? Yeah. 
I don't think it's, it's no longer financed through a bank. So that won't be the problem. And I don't think your taxes good. are far enough behind for an auction yet. Right. Okay. Especially, I don't think Jan would put it up for auction knowing that no, it's that's on the market. It. Right. So, right. I don't know. She might. But, but New Hall Road is still on the market. Um, and Roaring Brook Road. I'd like to get into both of those if we can. That yeah. one's been up and off and oh, up and off. And... She's been gone from for years now. Mm. Has it been vacant? Yes, mm. for a good while now. Usually there's someone living in the apartment in the back. Which one is that? New Hall Road. Oh, okay. Bachelors. Yeah. Right, the old Bachelor Farm. Mm -hmm. There's generally someone living in the apartment. Oh, is there? Yeah. Yeah. Which is very good, of course, for the property. Mm. Yeah. But uh, we'll see how I did. I did, did print out. up from the previous year in value? Uh, it did, it, at the 8%, just like everyone no, else. No, I don't did. mean oh, assessment. Oh. Oh, okay. I mean, oh, the eight seventy five. Yeah, I think that's about where they had had it listed before. Eight hundreds. Well, I thought she, it was. I think she paid eight fifty four. Oh, really? A number of years ago now. Yeah. Oh. I think she might have bought bought it back when the market was very high around two thousand eight, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I've downloaded all the listing photos, so that we have them in our records and can look at the rooms. Pretty well with those, but it would still be very good if we could see the properties yeah, themselves. Get that figure. <laughs> That's what the listing price is. Mm -hmm. Seven hundred and fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. This well, one just dropped. Yes, that just dropped it forty-one thousand. Yes. Yep, Roaring Brook Road. Mm -hmm. that, that was printed out like right ten days ten days ago. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, no. That now has a, was divided, Wildside was divided into two house lots. So there's that. Hi, come on in. How are you doing, Carla? Good. Good. So there's that uh, factor where the house started on the second house lot. But they did divide it. Though. Yeah, they did. It's Yes, we have the survey. There are two four-acre lots there now. Two legal lots. What, with the stone house? No, no, with, oh, with wild side. Oh, there's, oh, okay. And of course, both south facing hillsides, mm -hmm. which is a very popular type of property. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, that's new listings. As to new sales, um, let's see, we have this one. It was right very, very beginning of the month, and that's simply to go into a personal trust. Uh oh, that's going to But this transfer. is the house on Larch Meadow that did sell. It did sell. The 447.3. What's that one? That is, uh, was built by Joe Sermati and is we go up Larch Meadow, it's the first house on the right. I think we went to look at it. Oh, that one? Did yeah, this one. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lovely couple. Mm -hmm. Good. Nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it went, they were asking 469, they went for 449? 447.3. Oh, there 47. we go. Yeah. Yes. And those are the only two Ds this month, mm -hmm. or in November, I should say. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, what are you doing with these? Are you initialing them? Then we have a couple of new surveys, both on the same property. So I'm assuming that the, the same survey? more recent one, no, they're reported differently. Hmm. The more recent one has some. Different, or did one Yet. get dropped off and one came after no. it was recorded? No, they're both one fifty one seventy three and eighty one. Huh. So eighty one will be the one that carries. It's right. for Sandy Hay and Roger Goshi's property on Main Street, and where it abuts the historical society is is very good for them to get on record. Um, 
I think that's what they wanted to do. Perhaps if they choose to sell later. Yeah. This is between what the, had been written into the deeds. Between the Riverside and the Historical Society. Mm -hmm. Is now shown very clearly. Oh, so they just had a new deed done? Well, they had a new survey did? done. Yes, oh, they had surveyed. a new survey. Okay. They've been there for a number of years. Yeah. But they had this one done, and then they had it revised somehow to this one. Oh. And I haven't matched one for another yet, you know, to see if there's a misprint on a, yeah, so uh, say maybe a distance. They, maybe they found an error. It's maybe just a typo error on the first one. Well, this is the something said there. Yeah, that's right. There's a note there. Mm -hmm. That's not on the earlier one, the squatting. I can't see it. Uh, so about 44. Point, point, which 61, 44. Yeah. Oh, good. Yes, that's it. That's the difference. 0.73 acres, what? Plus or minus. All right. Oh. What I'm going to put on this one is C. Correcting survey. Mm, there we go. That's 151.81. Yeah, 151.81. Yep. Okay, and this one can just go in the file. We will not send it to Cartographic. We'll just send the, the other one. Well, before we go on to something else, how can we help you? I was just wondering if you've gone over the uh, abatement. Or we haven't started on any of them yet that require site visits and all. Yep. So we would have just gone over the list and said, okay, we have these left to look at and we'll call and get out to see them. And, and oh, uh, it's like I just under the interpretation when I saw you down here that you're probably going to go over them and just reading them stuff. We are. I sent pictures yeah. and yes, you did. That's yeah. great. So you're not going to decide. We're not going to decide. No, no, I'm totally them out. Oh, so. So how long is that going to take? Well, we'll probably try and figure out a time when we can get out uh, together and hopefully be able to do some of them at our next meeting in two weeks. We'd let you know anyway when we'd be talking about it at a meeting. Oh, okay. I'm sorry to bring you down. Okay, it's not that bad. Unnecessary. I just, I just thought when I asked you when you're going to be talking about it, you said, this yeah, we're, so we're, that's it. Tonight is our first effort yeah. with any of them. And uh, we did the ones that were pretty automatic, oh. you know, for various reasons. Mm -hmm. we, um, we're, we're exempt and didn't, didn't really got built, things like that. Yeah, not anything where there's a question on value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, we probably can look at the list though now. Mm -hmm. Of whom else we have. <laughs> Before we get out of the abatement mode, excuse me. You'll need the key. Okay, I wonder. Gotta be kept locked. It's got all the other ones in there with it. <laughs> yes, we're gonna change it. I like last year's, last year's system much better. Pull that thing in and out as it came in. So, how many um, did we get? We had a total of 12 formal applications mm -hmm. altogether. Mm -hmm. Three of them were and pretty much automatics, the ones that we've we already granted. Yep. 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 One. Two, three, yeah. Those were the autos. So we have nine more to visit. Okay. Um, one is two, two are on personal property. And so seven are on structures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I haven't read through the applications for their reasons myself yet. We were trying to get these others all set and done. One of them is from NSTAR. Right. 
And we so the standard yearly. Yes. Well, do we want to look at hers as long as she's well, here? Yeah, absolutely. We might get, of course. <laughs> Number eight, <laughs> right? Okay. Oops, that's the kind exemption. There we go. Robert and Carla Harlow. Mm -hmm. Okay, applying on the house and the walkway and so forth outside the house. The explanation includes the siding on the house is terrible. It's more than 50 years old. It chips and cracks all over, with chips and cracks all over. The open porch is not measured out correctly. It should be 10, 18 by 16. The barn is over 30 years old now. Really? Wow. And the roof is leaking and metal is not up to par. Rusty and screw seals, rusty, and the screw seals are losing their goodness. Uh, the terrace is a walkway to the back open porch and is only used for walking on. It's not a sitting on patio is what you're saying there. Yeah. Yeah. The bathroom is typical for a 50-year-old house. Let's see. Did you add anything else to that? Right. And she sent in some good pictures, which are a great help. Yeah, and I added also that you had said that the light panels in the barn roof yeah. are the fiberglass that, you know, the translucent fiberglass and they're leaking. Oh, is that an old property card? Or mm, that... That's, yeah, as build. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. Yep. So, can we look at the calendar and figure out when we might be able to go out? Generally, are Saturdays better? Well, I guess my question is on, yeah. on some of these. Let's see, when was the last time somebody was out there? 18 for photos. Extra, extra, extra. September. You said Malcolm stopped once and was came in. No, he didn't come in. He didn't come in. He just took pictures. No, he? he didn't do anything. He came out and sat on our back porch there, and we had company, and he just chit chatted with us. Didn't ask any questions. Didn't do anything. And who's oh, me? Who's she? Get up and leave. Goshi. Roger Goshi. Oh, we had him. We had hired him in 2018 to take pictures, take pictures. all over town. Oh, so, so a lot of them he did by himself after he and I did some together. Oh, because it looks like you and him went together. Right, he and I together. went out together for a few couple of days. Okay. Um, okay. So that must have been when your sidewalk or what terrace got added uh, on? Probably. I haven't looked I back to see when. Oh, huh? It's only, I think, been, if you go back in my um, chart, it's only been a couple of years. So it was the conversion that changed it. Probably. it, it but how do you it, get pictures with the conversion? The description. The, yeah, the description is. The description changed the terrace at about the same time we did the conversion. Right, for the new valuation program. Yeah, but there was a picture on the property card of a terrace that was never there before. So how does that get added on? From the pictures? If we go out and see that there's, you know, the pictures take. That were taken at that time, not these ones that we just sent. Yeah. But the pictures so, in 2018. So pull up my um, records here and just see when the last. I've got them when the last time we took pictures in the terrace. Is no, that would have been 2018. I'm not calling it a terrace. Yeah, I know. Lock it's the, it's the brick. The brick area. Yeah, because what in your in your um, I would imagine you have some kind of a um, sheet that you follow. Or, what you go by when you say somebody's got a terrace, what is your description of a terrace or whatever? Well, it's it's usually a, a terrace and patio are in, interchangeable. And they mean a paved 
whether it's paved with brick, with stone, with concrete, with wood. Sometimes, if it isn't a deck, it could be a terrace, I suppose. But uh, a seating area, outdoor seating area. Okay. Which, how, how large does it have to be? Well, if it's used because, as a patio, it's the, it's any size. But what size is a, you don't assess walkways? To, um, no. And how, so what is considered a walkway? How big? Well, usually, what, about three feet wide and having length to it? Yeah. Three or four, I don't know. Yeah. And isn't that what that is? It's, it's basically a walkway. There's a little bit more because we had the driveway back up the black top. So in order to make it look nice and neat, we're trying to bring the brick out to mm -hmm. the driveway and stuff. And, um, yeah. Yeah, well, we'll be glad to come out and see it. Can you just pull my um, chart and to see when? Oh, that would take a little while. I, I would have to look at each We'd year. We'd have to go into the program and pull each year, one have, after the other. You don't have the physical chart that you can pull? You don't have to pull? Well, there's not a chart. Well, you have a file. We well, have the still. file. Oh, that one, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. We can look at the, each, the, each of the most recent years. I just don't understand why. I said, it, if it can't, it would have been when we transferred to a new software, it obviously interpreted it. Sometimes they mm -hmm. interpret descriptions wrong. And in the transferring from one database to another database, it changed the description yep. to Terrace. Yeah, but I thought the picture wasn't even on there at one point. The just, you know, the drawing was added later. We'll look at the cards. Hmm. Well, one of them will be right here. Well, I have one. Yeah, that's last year's. Mm -hmm. And I have 23s here. Well, you've got 23. So what? I have 23. Well, that's 22. Oh, 22. Yeah. Well, it is on 22. Because I didn't catch it in 22. Okay. Yeah, well, if we're going to pull them, we're going to buy them all. Yep, there it is in 22. Mm -hmm. So, so I guess you would have agreed to that to be a, a terrorist, the whole thing. Because Roxy and Carla are sisters. I can't vote on it. Right. Well, she can't vote on it. Anyway. But I can right. talk no, about I don't. it. Right because she hasn't completed her first four chapters, so she can't vote on anything. Well, we're not she... deciding it anyway. Mm -hmm. We can no, discuss not... it. We're looking I at it right now. said vote, not discuss. No, okay, here's 20. Mm -hmm. The old program that's there. Mm -hmm. uh, no, fiscal year 20. Okay. And fiscal year 19, and fiscal year 18, and it was picked up then. I drew it in. Yeah, and you came up. That's when you came out? Yeah. Okay. Because this isn't eight feet, though. Okay, it's, we'll, it's, we'll remeasure. It's not even seven feet. I don't know. You can't even put a table there to sit there, so... Well, I mean, now I'll go back and look at our photos. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And what about the, and then are you going to remeasure that and everything? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, so, let's go ahead. I just think that when you find something different on the, um, on the property. Yes. Just out of courtesy of the property owner. You could get a note into your uh, tax bill or something just to say this is, or throw out a note and just say, you know, this has been changed on your property. Uh, Other than that, I mean. Well, we can't get anything into the bill because they're stuffed I mean, and folded and everything elsewhere. Well, they're not done here in town anymore. Well, yeah. Just those separate. Sent out. Uh, 
Well, I think what she what we're, she's thinking of is, you know, when you're going over something and you're changing mm -hmm. a pro something on a property, whatever the case may be, that um, even when you go and do a site visit and you see something different and you mm -hmm. change it. Like, Usually we talk with the people about it at the time when we're there. If there's somebody there. Yeah, yeah. if there's yeah, somebody you there, don't we talk always, about it. You'd be, there's probably quite a few that but you don't see. So I know when we do site visits for something like this, certainly they're there because we won't go out otherwise. Oh, but that's but more no, just that's more an abatement. Yeah, and but we I'm certainly try to try to uh, have people there whenever we do any, even just a um, data update, cyclical inspection, because we send notes out saying we're going to be you know doing your street on this Saturday and the next Thursday or something, and we'd like to stop and. Well, I'm just thinking on behalf of the property owner. Even though that you wrote or wrote in the picture, in my mind, okay, so they're just drawing up my walkway out to the back. I'm not a professional. I'm reading my card. I don't know how because I, I mean, there's no information on it. You don't get a, any kind of a what do they call it? A guide or a mm -hmm. table showing what mm -hmm. each. There's no agreed. manual. User's manual. No, there is no. But I'm saying, you know, usually. When you're reading a map, they have a what do they call it? The little table. Oh, the legend. Page. Yes. Yes. It explains what individual kind of road or whatever table. Right. Guideline. Well, we're working um, on that. Yeah. But um, you know, I just figured you're drawing out the the walk the walkway. So I didn't have any indication that I was being charged or assessed, I should say assessed for anything and additional. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm saying it would have been nice to get a little bit of note saying, you know, we, we decided that this wasn't just a walkway, it was a terrace or something like that. And this is what's going to go forward. There, there, there are two points of view, one of which yours is valid. The other one also is that it's up to the property owner to keep track of changes on their property. Uh, oh. Just it is as it is up to the property owner to apply for abatement if they feel there's been uh, an improper change or an, an increase in value that's not supported by the market. Um, we I, can only do so much. There are only so many I hours in the day. I understand that. Yeah. But the thing I understand is, the frustration. Of, I mean, there's not a, a red flag on there saying, you know, well, we made a change to your property card. If you have, if you want to discuss it with us, we'll discuss it. Other than that, I mean, you just get the bill out. You can even get a picture of your property card unless you come down and ask for it. Mm -hmm. That's right. So it's available. You know, we're here. How many hours a week is it open? And you can call and leave a message. Anyone can call and leave a message asking for their property record card. I, I get that. I and get that. It's up to us, and we can come and, and we get can't, the property card. But I think something in a small town like this. Yeah. I mean, why can't that has fifteen hundred parcels? Yeah, yeah but how many homes? It's not eight hundred homes. Them all the time. No, but think of how many structures. I thought there was only eight hundred. I don't know. I just, I just think eight hundred and something single family residents. Oh, single family. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I, we have several yeah, thousand it, structures. True, but I, I think what the frustration is, is. Not every house is changed. Something changes on it every year, yeah. right? There's a few that get something gets added, or they you see something different and you change. So could it be where those few homes that you do change the bill or change something on the property card? Maybe just send a notice. Maybe a picture of the property card and send it out with a note saying we changed this. Is that like to volunteer office time to do that project? It's it's a huge potentially a huge project. You need to look at many of them. You need to figure out what change is basically a market change, what is is not. But, uh, he, but you're doing that. All of this way. information is available. You're doing that anyways can, because you're reassessing the property. Right? Not really. We're adjusting, you know, reassessing in that we're adjusting in value, yes. But I'm saying changes on the property. Yeah. Not just reassessing the values. It would be nice on the same route if the homeowners, when they made a change, they told us. There you go. 
How many homeowners make changes, significant changes in their homes inside? With no building. With no building with permits. No this, no and that. don't tell us. That's true. I'm not saying That's that doesn't opinion. happen. I'm yeah, not saying that. Is a huge I'm not, on that. Yes. And Everybody, they're not paying I mean, their fair share. Do their own work. But the point is, if when you're getting billed and assessed, get billed, it would be nice. For their actual market. It's value. not that much because how right. many how many do you I mean, change it's, it's, Yeah, but where can we come to a good I don't common know. ground? I'll bet you're in 30 to 50. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, yes. yes. Well, it was you said it was like 30 to 50 each year that get some minimal change. Minimal. No. Okay. So I was I I mean this happens every year, correct? I mean, there might be minor adjustments every sure. year. Yeah. So not to every house every year, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's a process as part of the regular uh, information update. And as we go out on site visits, we make a note of what's there now right. and compare it to what was there. But that's only every three years, isn't it? And no. so, no. It's, it's a six year cycle, but we go as often as we need to if something is changing. If a property is changing so, from one year to the next. I'm sorry, Bernie, you don't you question, please? Yeah, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So my question was, when you you were saying, Lee, that you notify people, oh, we'll be on your street this day or whatever, yes. maybe maybe the easy way to approach this is when that happens, the notification, just put on there, in the event that your card is changed because of this, please check with the assessor's office. Well, we're going to be bringing a copy of each person's property record card with us. Right, but if they're not there at the house, I, I'm just thinking that you know I I know what it's like in a small town and with not that much staff to try to notify everybody of exactly what's going on. It might be a little overwhelming. Um, yeah. But but at least if the homeowners were notified and said, okay, there may be changes because we've been here. That's what we're you know looking at. Right. I don't know. Whatever. Was why we especially thought try very hard to talk with people. Right, right, yeah. So I get what you're saying. Just add, add to the card, add, add a line to the card that says, "Please note there may be changes to your property card after this visit." Um, to the postcard. Mm -hmm. Add it to the postcard exactly. so people are aware that something may have changed, and they can. Exactly. Just one way to. Yep. To follow up. Yep. And that, and gives, someone... that gives them the opportunity to either come in and look at their right. ask for their card or to make a phone call and say, hey, did you happen to notice I added this or did you happen to know we took it away? Notice we took this away. You know, that this yeah. isn't here anymore. Or this is here now. Or if they'd like to give us their email, that's yep. a much easier way for us to be in contact with someone. Yep. And we don't give out anyone's emails nope. or phone numbers. Mm -hmm. But it is a two-way communication. If someone wanted sure. to give us their email so that we could contact them that way. Mm -hmm. That'd be much easier and faster and less expensive than mailing in something out. So that could maybe be a compromise. Yeah. But, but, a but the thing is, I mean, I've been in this town for how many years? I've never, I don't think Must I your life. Right, my whole life. I've never seen any um, notice. I'm going to be doing Main Street. I'm going to be oh, doing yeah. Elm Street. I've never received a notice. Well, we have some I, now, not I, in recent have, years, but yes, I have. We had. Well, I haven't, and I've. And I've I haven't. They just showed up. Yeah. I got a little little green card. Oh, it right. said there'll be an assessor visiting your property between it, it visiting your area on these days. You know, it's like saying, "Don't shoot them when they come." <laughs> <with their pictures. laughs> Don't send the dogs out. No, no, no. <laughs> At any rate, regardless of the past, that can't yeah. be changed now. Yeah, we are doing that. To each house that we hope to see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'm just saying that I would appreciate it if somebody was changing something on my on my property card that was going to make a mm -hmm. difference. Because as previously as you know, just for the fun of it, when you send out when you do send out that notice, um, if anybody wants to come in and talk about their property card or whatever, come on down. And I yeah. says to my husband, I think I'll go down and see what's going on. Well, you don't have to do that. Everything's fine. Well, I think I'll go down. Yeah, because you don't see your property card unless you come in here. I wish we were being assessed for a bathroom, a finished cellar, which was, and nobody's ever come in our house. So I'm thinking, how did that happen? Permits. Now, oh, you know, no, because it hasn't been done. done. It wasn't. How can yeah. you get a permit? Well, then, how did she get a finish? They weren't. It, it was added finish. on. It was just added on. It was a change on the card. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to say is if there's a change on a card, 
Yes, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, it should be almost either sent out or something saying, just send the card out and say, we changed this. Yeah. So if they, if you are being changed and there's a question that that's not right. Yeah, yeah. Because um, how does that get put on the, fine. how does that get put on a property without someone going and looking at it? It can be done from permits. Okay, if there's no permit, how does it get put on there? It can be done from seeing a couple people working and stopping and looking and asking. Right. But in this case, nobody's ever been in our house. Right. So I couldn't see how that happened. Right. And I think that I, sending a postcard out to folks before we go, we can add that line at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Changes in your valuation may occur. May occur. Yep. Then should there be changes in the valuation? If you, if we have an email. I think you're kind what of. What are your ideas I here, think, Russ? I just think you're kind, you're kind of making it a little Le bit more. Um, if you add. Well, it's, it winds up at the end that it's the taxpayer's responsibility for anything. And the accuracy. And accuracy? We, yeah. For accuracy, we do not want to have inaccuracies. God knows. We don't. That's the last thing we want. We want our, our data to be correct. Then if you want the data to be correct on the on a certain level, the the property owner has to see what you have for information on their property and Learn know how to read it. And then, that's and what I was trying to get. get yeah, <laughs> so we're this, getting there. We're um, getting there with that project. Um, uh, I know in other towns, though, they have a booklet with all the properties in the whole town that could be out on that table. So if somebody does want to make an appointment. Yeah. This is it right here. But it, it, it's. No, it's not found in a booklet. But this is. That. This is. Oh, yeah. Where? Well, I'd love to go see it. Yeah, well, for Derby, Vermont. <laughs> yeah, well, that's Vermont. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's it's basically the same thing. That's a hike. You can well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, I did a little some BB planes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you? <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's just that you know you don't have to bother anybody to print up anybody's. Uh, uh, well, you card. would if they wanted to take it. Well, you would. With, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can take a stuff. picture. Yeah, I mean, we have a a our commitment <laughs> book is available here, which shows everyone's valuation and their tax bill, yeah. amount of their tax. That's available anytime for someone to come in and look at. Mm -hmm. We do not have anything like it. Well, right now we happen yeah. to have that pile of 2022s because they're still waiting to be filed. And that's not even the whole in the pile. individual owner's and property cards. Okay. So that's yeah. what we do. We yeah, buy them a hell of by a the binder. owner, and this is only not by the year. This mm -hmm. is only like two thirds of the and the amount of I know the part. amount of of ink and time and everything else that would be involved in that. Yeah, the binder would have to be, or we'd have to have several yeah, binders it's, because it's it'd be like that. Way. Yeah, and and Derby's a lot larger than this town. So what about what about because it is public knowledge? Anything that how it's, anybody is assessed? Yes, right? yes, and completely available. Right. So what happens if, you know, your your spreadsheet and just list all the homes and just have it available? Oh, that used to be published. It came out at town meeting. It was a booklet. No, I'm just saying evaluations just in town. Have it out somewhere where somebody you can come in and compare. Well, that's the commitment book. You can see what your is yours is valued at. You can see what Mine is valued at yours. And where's that? It's right there. It's right there, and it's in Jan's office. Yeah. So, so I'm just wondering, can it, be, can it be posted out somewhere? It's can a binder. Post? No, but this See, is I don't, a sheet. You can do that. I, I don't think you want to oh. post it out. I, Why? The, it's, pu it's public. It yes. is public. And I would like to know who's talking. It. So. It's not even that. It's just that, I mean, the, this this building is open to everybody in the town and and outside of the town oh, yes and put leaving things in the front hallway is just they're going everything it's going to walk away and it's going to be, be a huge. constant redo because things walk away out of that front hallway well not if it's a it's spreadsheet if it's a spreadsheet listing homes and people can just go and look and compare i mean what's wrong with that is that not 
you don't want people to know that? Sure, I don't have any problem. It's it's pub, but I I just oh. think it's a lot of extra. For me, it would be a lot. I, I mean, I didn't know that there's a whole pile of things or whatever. If I want to come in and just look at somebody's, yeah. I mean, we we compared ahead. to this, what I have, and I know from living in town, I know other people that have got walkways that going up to the front, and I don't know if they're assessed. I don't want it to bring it to your to your attentions because if you didn't assess them, then that's. I mean, I'm not an assessor. I don't want it to bring it up. Mm -hmm. I understand that point of view. So, um, but we have to come to some logical way way to deal with these questions. That's not too cumbersome or not too expensive, right. uh, considering our budget. And. We still do certainly cover the availability of information. So, and Roxy's working hard to make more of the detailed information out there for someone to look at, make it more accessible. Mm -hmm. And we're basically in agreement on that. And, but it takes time and it takes work. And it's been very, very hectic in here until we got the bills out. Then, unfortunately, I was called away on a family matter for a number of weeks, so I'm just catching up now. But thinking forward, I'd say let's think about what's been said tonight. And if we can come up with a, a good compromise or a good solution, bring it on, ladies. Well, do you have anything like... Um a format that you go by when you go out to uh, uh, to assess the house? Yeah, because we take the property record card. No, I mean a format that you go by. That is the format that we go by. We look at the dimensions. We compare it to the dimensions on our drawings. We walk around the house. We look at the no, different that's parts not of the what house. I mean. I mean, we don't have a checklist, no. Because the well, record card serves because, as a checklist. Because the homeowner is putting in a walkway. Yep. I put in a walkway. Mm -hmm. It's a walkway to me. Mm -hmm. And you say it's not a walkway, it's a terrace. I would like to see a format that is- Well, that's what I was trying to get you to right. explain. What is a terrace? I know. What is, and so people can understand- And working on that. I know. So, and that's what I'm trying to- so I that's think, in progress. So, or what is a patio compared to what a terrace is? So, well, there's this, the other so interchangeable. Is right. it? So it, makes it, it seems like we're working backwards here because before you call something a terrace, you should have something written down, a guideline to the property owner and says, well, this is what we call a terrace. It's so many well, feet wide. I, it's I so just, long we, or, yeah, we don't do it. I don't say we wouldn't do it by feet. It's, it's how it's used. If you can have a couple of chairs and a little table it's, there, it's, it's, it's dimensions, dimensions are involved. Maybe right. when Malcolm was sitting on it, that's yeah. when he wrote down the dimensions. Sitting on maybe, the open porch. maybe uh, that's right there in the picture. One person there. has a a an area that's ten feet in diameter, and it beautifully sits uh, two chairs and a central table. And you can go out there. You can have share a lunch. And, yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah. Another person has one that is. 15 by 35 mm -hmm. along the side of the pool. Yeah. Those are both yeah. patio terraces. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's not a matter of qualifying based on dimensions. In that particular case, it would be uh, the definition would be by use rather than dimensions. Uh, but on could the, it be on, used? On the whole, that's what I mean. It needs to be written down. <laughs> So if somebody comes in and says, why are you calling this a terrace? It's very easy for Russ to say it, for Rox to say it, or Lauren. I guess we've always understood it for so long that, well, that I mean, there, having someone new ask you questions book, about yeah, it. Yes, that's there. right. If you, if you really want to get to it, we'll yeah. hand you the book. Right, that we had used for many, probably many about 20 pages on guess. patios. True, right. and I understand that's a, a yes an explanation. But the point is, what do we use as when we're valuing we use that it? as a basis? Mm -hmm. 
No. Well, you can do, put anything into that as a basis. I mean, you right. could change any any of them. But the point you can't is, change the measurements. No, I didn't say no. measurements. What do you change? What are you, you calling said you can change it? anything? Well, what you can call things up there by that book. But the point you is, call it either a patio or a terrace. <laughs> I know, but he says there's 20 different things you can call it well, in the book. Yeah, I mean, the, the, what I'm trying to say yeah. is you need to say, we as an assessors in Conway say, okay, these are going to be called terraces and stick with that in some way because they're all made a certain way, right? I think we're it, quite consistent in it. I know, but Russ just says, well, there's 20 different ones you could call it if you want to look at the book. The well, book has, different materials, different. Yeah. It, it lists them all in there. I mean, whether it's bricks to, on edge, whether it's pavers. You have to have a building permit or pull a permit to put a terrace in. I believe so. Do you have to do that to do a sidewalk? I don't think so. <laughs> I've never seen one come through or something like that. Yeah. But you have to have a basically have to pull a permit to do almost anything else. Yeah. Well, if yeah, a lot of things, yes. So you have to pull a permit to do electrical work. You don't have to. You don't have to pull a permit in Massachusetts per shed under two hundred square feet. No, no, smaller than that, under hundred square feet, something so like one that. Wait, ones that they bring up. Can I make an offer? Have to have a permit. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you go on a site visit and you come back. After you're done marking up the property card, yep. could you please print the property card and just leave a copy on my desk? Sure. I will mail the property card to the homeowner and say, please review. That would be great. Yeah, I love that please idea. Please review these changes that were made yeah. to your card because of the site visit. Yeah. You know, yes. just like make a highlight for what you added or you took That's away perfect. and just let me just, just leave it on my desk with a note that, you know, and I'll just mail it. Okay, we'll put more you of know, time. Yeah, we will put more of my time. More postage. Yep. Yeah, I know. More time, more postage. If yep. I can get people's email addresses, it would be fabulous. Yes. Email Emails are the best way so. to do what? Our tax money is paying for that anyway. So, you know, right. Well, it is, but yeah, but we're only allowed a couple hundred dollars a year to spend. Yeah. And oh, yeah. For, right. that, for, for postage. And when you're postage talking, postage mailing out all the exemption applications and the chapter applications and approvals and the acknowledgments. In the long run, there's going to be people it. that aren't even going to follow through on it. So you're not going to probably have to do anything more on it. So, but. okay. Just, just, I don't know. It, yeah, it, I think it's a good idea. Let's just do it and I'll send them out. You know, okay, well, how me, many do you think? Do I, you? I mean, like you said, 30 to 50 at yeah. a minimum. I mean, you year. have 12 or something that we have to go look at, yeah. right? And if there's changes to be made or something, we that's also have easy all of our new growth visits mm -hmm. go out on, mm -hmm. and that's going to be probably but that's 20. different. That's not that is, but we still are relisting as we do as we go on that. Oh, for people that are building or yes. something, mm -hmm. yes. And then we're trying to pick up part of a neighborhood, at least, if not a neighborhood, every year. Yeah. And no, this is only for property cards. You made actual change, right. physical changes right. to the right. property. Yes, but yes. you know we can we can end up working in a good year when we're able to get out quite a good deal on easily a hundred hundred fifty. But you don't year. make changes to a hundred fifty. No. Oh no. Well, that's what I'm saying to only things that you right. make changes to. Right. Anything so the abatement on. visits, you know, and all the new growth right. visits, they're going to have changes, right. and maybe half of the others. Mm -hmm. We often pick up something. Yeah, pick up lots of sheds. Yes, we go on and say okay, and then all right. Why, why don't we analyze it a little more and say if the homeowner isn't there to discuss the changes you're making and they so they understand what's happening, then mail the card. If the homeowner just, just have a flat policy, it's too difficult to remember. <laughs> yeah, who that's, did, that's who good did, did. what they said, all this. Mm -hmm. I'll try and get their email addresses regardless. The emails would be but, good. Email, yes, yeah. emails, emails would be, would be wonderful. much better. Yes. All right. We really do have to okay, move on. on. <laughs> so thank you, Carla. <laughs> and right. appreciate your thoughts and ideas. So, and we'll be in touch probably early next week about getting out on our visits. We can't go this Saturday. We have town meeting. Yeah. So it would be, unless Russ can squeeze in an afternoon. No, you're away next week. So then it's Christmas, New Year's. So now we're into next year. 
<laughs> well, we go out a lot between Christmas and New Year's because that's a good time to pick up new growth. It has to be as of Before January 1st. first. Right. Mm -hmm. New growth is as of January 1st. So we've been knocking on people's doors on January 1st in the past. And, and uh, we get out and around for that. Usually we try and do anything in the immediate area that we need to see for whatever whatever reason. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I don't know, maybe the week after if we can sneak you out one afternoon for a couple of hours or something. We'll see what happens. But um, okay. So we will be in touch. So thank you for coming in. And I appreciate your point of view and ideas. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Yep, it's in the effort of helping us move towards something better, and that's always good. Okay. <laughs> okay, very good. That can go back in the pile then. Oh, <laughs> that pile. Laurie, I think yours is by far the best solution. It seems to answer. Well, that's what I was trying to get to. Just send out a thing saying you're, what you showed, what you changed. Okay, well. While we've mentioned permits, here are the new yeah. ones. Well, I don't, can't do these. You can look at them. Oh, okay. see what's going on. There's, permits. there's no voting. There's no monetary. There's no oh, it's reviewing uh, oh. building permits that have been taken out. Ooh. And, oh. and granted, I should say. Mm. Actually, I'm going to, um, because you're doing a site visit, do you want this oh, kept out? And set a file back away. Yeah, for the moment. No. Until we're done with our abatement. Oh. It doesn't say what it is, right? You just let's see. New garage storage building. That's it. But that's all. Mm -hmm. You don't know what size or anything. No, not until we get there. Oh. Okay. It may say we can look at their plans. Is it new if garage we, or new garage door? New garage no. building. New garage and storage building. Yes. Oh, sorry, I missed So what we can one. do is on when we're over but, to that permit, if we the, can look at another tab and that shows us the plans that were submitted. Yes. So we see what dimensions were submitted and then we have to check on site to well, make you, sure it was built to plan. Usually I staple the plans to the permit. Yeah. Usually I like this one's getting this, one. this one's getting a generator so that one's a... all right. You're so okay. Hmm. I recognize this one. No <laughs> You're getting solar Somebody's panels. Getting, You're solar. getting solar panels. <laughs> Look at how many. My pretty red. Are you going to be making money doing it? Oh. <laughs> no, my house is 100% electric. So. Now, what are they doing? My pretty red roof is going to be this an ugly black roof. Mm -hmm. Is this another replaced water heater? I need the same. Same person. Oh, okay. Yeah, probably the same. Yeah, there's probably one plumbing, one electrical. Oh, oh yes. 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 Okay. The same Sorry. job. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just like with the solar panels, you'll see one one building, one mm -hmm. electrical. Oh, oh, so there's a lot of. Wow, well, they're kind of a lot. They're at least fifteen for new growth. Uh, that we can try and put into that week. Which one I've seen that put in the car charger. Yes. Yes. Yep. We'd had a couple of them. I'm surprised. Uh, the Tesla. Yeah, I tell you. I'm sorry. I mean, I know they put can I tell you a story of what stuff. happened to somebody with one of the car chargers? No. Uh -oh. They had one of the, the they had one of the hybrid vehicles that yes. you could run it. You flip the switch, whatever. You run it on gas or run it on electrical, mm -hmm. electric. 
And when gas was low, they really didn't charge it up much. And when gas prices started to go up, they decided to start charging it. Mm -hmm. $6,000 electric bill. <gasps> oh, oh my word. Why, because they let it run down? Or that, the battery had run down, run so down. they plugged it in to charge it, but it was a six thousand oh dollar electric bill. It, I I don't know. Oh, they yeah. thought it was a typo. Yeah. They <laughs> they, it was a typo. But nope there there was there was some kind of an issue with the with the battery, and it wasn't pulling, it wasn't charging, it and wasn't it just kept pull, running. It kept, wasn't holding it a charge. It kept pulling and pulling, and so you always have to maintain a charge in those, obviously, in order to. There was a big fault in it. I think a six thousand dollar bill. I think I'll, I'll stick with the what Toyota's idea of the hybrid is you have the batteries and when you're running on gas, it charges the battery in the oh. car. You don't plug in. Their hybrids have been around forever. That's a good idea. Years. Oh, that's, that's the Prius? The, yeah, the Prius, the RAV4. Sure. So like if you're going under 30 miles an hour, you're automatically running on battery. But mm -hmm. when you pick up higher speeds, it switches to gas. And when you're running on gas, it's charging right. your batteries. So heck, getting around town, I've never. Yeah. Okay, so let me just ask a question, okay? Um, because, you know, you're getting permits for people to do insulation and all that, but that doesn't really affect any assessments. That's right. So uh, what that is, is, is maintenance mm -hmm. and taking care of your property. Right. And it might uh, conceivably feed into the effective age of a property, but basically it's just good maintenance. Right. I look at these? I don't think you have a lot of them. Um, There's a lot of solar in there. A lot solar. of stuff gets done in November and December before the holidays. People like to have things done or, or start of winter. Yep, end of fall, start of winter, do insulation, change heating systems, add pellet stoves. Yeah, doing a deck. Sure. Yeah. It's probably oh the first. that was a yes replacement mm. structural failure yeah yeah or yeah. It could I mean when you look at the way the con um, contractors are booked up it could have been the first available slot that's right mm. that's right solar panels. I didn't know the, where to, who to go with with the solar panels. <laughs> we opted to go local. I mean, we talked to a lot of the big companies. Yeah. You know, the, the Sunrun and this one and that one. And we just ended up deciding. I mean, the prices are all about the same. They're all about the same. Are they? They really are. They're, they're all about the same. Mm -hmm. So we figured that if we're going to throw the money out there, we're going to throw it to a, a local company. And... Mm -hmm. Local it, maintenance or whatever. Well, there's it, not really maintenance. No. On there's not a lot no, of maintenance on them, but at least when you're dealing with someone local, you know, if there is a problem, you can go knock on the office door, or you know mm -hmm. where they are, or that you don't. Know, you're not chasing mm -hmm. someone down in Texas or mm -hmm. California. They are due to the motor vehicle abatement. And besides, yeah, I'd rather support people in the next, you know, in this county. Them. Yes, we did those. Oh, no, here we are. Then oh, in Los oh, Angeles yeah. or Houston, oh, yeah. we signed them. Right. What? We did the warrant. We did the warrant. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're doing abatement applications. Yes. Plan site visits will come as soon as we can work out a. Right. You totally skipped schedule. over the motor vehicle abatements. Right. That's okay. Right. We're catching them now. From the pilot, it seemed felt like a foot high in front of me. It's down you a did couple have of a... inches. <laughs> yeah, now it's over here in front of me. I know. <laughs> I like that shift.
33 panels on that one. Mm, mine's 47. Wow. There's a big difference in price whether you go ground mounted or roof mounted. Mm -hmm. That's a big, big consideration, or whether you go with a tracker as opposed to simply an array. Oh. So, what about the ground ones? They're a lot more expensive than the roof mounted. Well, uh, mm -hmm. Well, I mean, ours turned out to be a really quick, simple installation because we had the metal roof put in a few years ago and mm. it's already all set up. That's another thing. Don't have to re-roof. Well, yeah, yeah, well, what the, happens there if set up is almost not? Well, you, oftentimes you, they will combine an installation with putting new roof down for you. Mm -hmm. And but then it should something come up. Yeah. You have to call them to come and move a few panels to fix a leak or something or whatever. But the metal roofs already have all the ridges and everything. They yes, just, everything. They just hook on that. You don't even have to go. You don't have to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the installation is just. Yeah. That's nice. That's nice. Okay. We're on to motor vehicle applic abatement applications. We have five this evening. Um, I've been through all of them and double checked it. They are all worthy. Most of them are traded in. However, this first one was a return under the Lemon Law, really? which we see maybe once a year. Yep. And so this person was billed for only one month yeah. because they got the car and returned it within the same month. <laughs> so that's what happened there. And they provided all the documentation. Was that a brand new car? It, no. Oh, no, it was a used car. Oh, okay. uh, 2003. Mm. Yep. And it turned it was represented in one way and turned out it needed a new engine. Oh, gosh. So the seller received it back and they jointly made a letter explaining it and agreeing to the uh, description of the situation. So um, this was a trade-in. Trade-in. Uh, Toyota was a... It was a trade-in. Yeah, that was a trade and the the um, bcfs level leasing trade was a trade so we have all of those and this one lemon law i'd like to make a motion to approve all of them unless you'd rather look through the paperwork first okay okay a second second, second. okay any further discussion mm -hmm. questions no eyes aye. Aye. okay <laughs> Have you mm -hmm. checked into the new the habitat house to see how they're doing? I haven't recently. Siding's going up. Yeah. Is it? Mm -hmm. Good. What's the little thing in the front they added on? It almost looks like. I haven't looked at it that closely. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like a shed thing in the front of it. Oh, a little roof over those windows? Well, it could be a little storage. Yeah, it's, it's oh, something. Okay. Oh, it's, I think it's a shed because there's no cellar under that house. There's a it's shed, on, on there's a shed going on the back. Yeah, no, this is in the front. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. See, now that's something being built that wasn't in the plans. Yeah, because when we went and looked at it, there was that's nothing right. there. And the plans were very clear that that mm. was not. Yeah, maybe it's a it could also be a temporary thing for... It doesn't look temporary. Oh, okay. It looks like it's added on to the building. <laughs> I mean, just from driving by. Right. right. That's a good example of that type of thing that we find when we get out there. Mm -hmm. It's a small house. It is. And with no basement. Mm -hmm. And there's no garage. So, I mean, you need a 
to yeah, put stuff in the He's right. placed to put in the bottom of the well, it had to be the same, roughly the same footprint as the one that was there in order to meet the conservation yes, the regulations. Did. Right. Right. It was the old stone there was a, house. There was a house there. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. It was an Not old camp that had been made into camp. a. Well, I don't know. Right. Never tired. Professor had it as a camp. And then, or when he retired, he <clears throat> put a little into it and lived there year round. Hmm. So it had to be put, it had to be on that footprint. Yes. Ah, uh -huh. I didn't know that's now. Mm -hmm. I believe, yeah, that was one of the conservation restrictions. Mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons yeah. he had a heart and couldn't sell the land. Yes. Oh. I mean, there's so really quite a fairly sizable piece that goes with that. It goes all the way up yeah, to Hobby's of driveway almost, but it's all wet. Like yes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, <clears throat> chapter applications. We have actually, in line with that, a renewal of a forest cutting plan for the um, former Graves lot over lots over on uh, the lots on Graves Road, the Red Crafts lots. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're now owned by um, the daughter, Dorothy Smith, and her husband. And so it was time. It's been in Chapter 61 for decades. And so this is simply continuing in the plan. And uh, there's nothing to sign here. We can initial it. We... So they're just submitting the... They're just sharing. submitting. Right. Yeah. That's the new plan. Mm -hmm. Yep. And this is the end of the chapter applications? Yeah, those are the, that's, that's... Yay! Yes. At the end of the chapter. Yes. That we would have had done a long time ago, except we haven't been able to have a no, meeting in about oh, six weeks. Yes. Eight weeks. <laughs> well, at any rate, um, this is a renewal of a forest management plan. Yes, it's again, we don't need to, we don't, it's not legally obliged to return an annual filing on forest land, but we appreciate it when people do. And it enables us to keep in touch with them better. Uh, and we do try and ask if they would make a note as to what they might have done in the last year. And periodically. So they're filing, they, they put in a file and they didn't need to. Is that what you're saying? Right. Mm -hmm. They are obliged to file every 10 years. Right. But if they're willing to, you know, just send us, send it to us and say, oh, in the last year, we just did firewood or we did invasive species or whatever. Mm -hmm. Periodically, we can take that and we can look at their management plan and see if they are acting in reasonable accordance with it. Yeah. So um, let's see. I guess we have to do these. And that's a combined one. That's a 61A. 61A. Most of these had come in, but the paperwork was not complete. This is a new one. Okay, we have two chapter 61 plan uh, properties here. The Rankin property on Graves Road or the two properties on, one is on Graves Road, the other is behind it, in a, behind the grammar school in there. And he's simply renewing, he too has been in chapter for many, many, many years. Uh, so I move to accept the BAT and the Hubbard plan. Both chapter 61 renewals. Do you want to move them one at a time or wait until you go review the batch and look them all? We can do down? that. Totally up to you. Okay. Jump in with any questions. This is the Topman Farms chapter 61A renewal. Um, the information is provided and the paperwork is all signed. Mm -hmm. So that's in good order. And the Hannes farm, was that transferred over this year to the son? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And so he did get everything, get all the paperwork in and provided a figure for line two. This is another 61, actually. It used to be Georgia Devine's property up on the old Cricket Hill Road mm -hmm. and the forest. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
Well, so at least just on, did they just transfer it to the? New they plan? did. They amended the, the plan mm -hmm. into their names, and so yeah, they're all good order. And then we have a sixty-one A and B, and that's the um, farm over on Whateley Glen Road, Moore and Gustafson, and they have provided all their information. Mm -hmm. Yep, some of the lands in B, the, the woodlands over there are mostly in B. Uh, no, they have a 61 there. Sorry, 61, 61A is the process there. The woods are in 61. The uh, fields, of course, are in, in 61A. There's been no further activity toward any development of the um, marijuana crop. Marijuana. I think that yeah, idea, uh, yeah. yeah, for the yeah. moment, that idea has been tabled, but it may be moving forward. No, it hasn't. He's just been working with the outside people that he has to work with. Oh, good. Yeah, okay. Tabled. I know it's something they wanted very much. So. Yeah, no, when they when they amended their permit here, yep. then they had to redo a bunch of legal paperwork and, and filings uh -huh. and whatnot with the state. And So it's a several year, certainly, process. So it, yeah. be, very, it, it should start very soon. Okay, it'll so, be interesting to see. Yeah, it, there's just a lot of paperwork, a lot of filings, a lot of mm -hmm. there's a lot to it to get started. Yeah, I can believe that. Uh, Walt Goodridge's 61 plan. He wrote down timber stand improvements, thinning and control of invasives. Mm -hmm. George Murphy and Janet Shays. Uh, theirs is a forest and 61B. Mm -hmm. So they have both types of property over there. And they do have a management plan, so that's properly filed. Chris Herman is 61B, and his form is all in good order. That's a, These are all renewals. We have one new plan, and it's people who bought land on Thompson Road. Um, Williams. Williams, okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. And they are applying to go into Chapter 61B for next, for fiscal 24. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't make any difference, of course, and the bill just went out, but come next fall, uh, and they filled it all in very carefully, and we're all in good order. Question. Yes. What's the minimum acreage on that? On 61B? Yeah. I believe it's five. Okay, so even when they do finally decide to move to Conway and build their house, they'll yep. still be able to maintain. Okay. Oh, sure. They're putting five acres in, and they have okay. a total of 6.248. Right, right. I was just curious. So they, they've gone. kept out just over an acre okay. for the house and driveway. Okay. Smart and that's cookies. perfect. Smart yep. Cookies. Yep. Yep. So move to accept, accept the group. Good. Second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion, questions? No problem. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sign away, people. Sign away. Okay. You take half and sign away that half, and I'll take this half. We'll switch off. Now, Roxy ought to be able to. No, I don't think so. No, because this determines the valuation. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because I think that's what you were saying it has to be changed. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it changes. It just won't matter. You already have two. Oh, it's only when Lee was in here to sign right, them. Right. right. It was just that one batch. Mm -hmm. Yep. Not one small batch. Right. If you just want to sign and I'll fill the rest in. Okay. You know, that's fine. That'd be great. Yeah. Save yourself some time. Thank you. I can mark the, I mean, you're just checking approved and putting the date in. Yep. So. And I got to send out letters for them all anyway, so I'm going to have them in hand. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, letters probably won't go out until after town meeting, but. Right. <laughs> yeah, we do have town meeting. We do have one issue on the warrant, yep. which is um, if the town will accept the provisions to allow the income level to increase every year. For low income seniors applying for personal exemptions under 41C. And the limit that by which it can increase is based on the consumer price index and is a figure distributed to the towns by the Department of Revenue. We don't calculate it, but they'll send us a percentage figure by which we can increase the income limit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that would be something nice to be able to post each year yes. on our website. Mm -hmm. Yep. As we get that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because we topped out. A person has to be approved. 
<laughs> oh, well. First, first it has to actually be approved. Yeah. Right. But what it would be nice if, I think if they're thinking about our... it to know what the. Um... Oh, yeah. Well, it's a, that's on the website. Mm -hmm. And it's on yeah, the application right now, as well. Right, yeah. Right now, the requirements are, are on that. Very tight. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully, some other folks who maybe deserve and but, need it. But um, would be if, if, I, if I'm correct, the state reimburses the town for that, doesn't it? Not all of it. Oh, not all of it. No. No, just a small portion. Oh, does it? It reimburses. Uh, some of the veterans and a little bit of the low income seniors. Oh, okay. I thought it, the rest of it, it all comes out of overlay. Oh, otherwise. And I think. What possibly, about for the, the, the chapters? You know, does the state reimburse that for any of that? No, no. Okay. Just wondering. No. The benefit to the town is the person's personal investment in maintaining good forests, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, good land management, productive soils. Yep. You know, we, we have that fellow coming to speak on the 19th about mm -hmm. the agricultural soils. Mm -hmm. That's the last one. Have we any other business before the board? Our next meeting will be on Wednesday the 21st. Mm -hmm. Uh, hopefully, maybe we can get out on site visits a little bit before then. See what we can do. And but keep in mind, the clerk is not going to be here. That's right. Last week of October. She take us back. We close the public for that week. The week between Christmas and New Year's. Mm -hmm. well, that's good. Yeah. I need, I need a little downtime. Mm -hmm. It's a good yeah. time to take vacation. Yeah, not going anywhere, not doing anything. Probably won't even leave my house. <laughs> Be lucky if I get out of my sweats. <laughs> it's just, and we may be out there slogging in the snow drifts. We you know, have a good time. We've done that before. We're hoping. <laughs> I, well, I don't know if we're going to have that much snow. Hopefully, we don't. It doesn't Who knows? It doesn't look like much coming for the next few. You no, know, let's hope not. I'm. I'm. I don't need it. No, no, don't need it. Don't need it. Don't need it. Don't want it. We're just over there. Oh, I'll we're bet in, in Italy. Italy, the Dolomite stuff. Uh, no, we're yep. down about two thirds of the way. Really beautiful. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Yeah. Where were you? Yeah. Italy. I know, but where? Well, up north. Up north, the northern part of Italy. Where oh, yeah. The mountains are called the Dolomites. Yeah. Are they part of the Alps or are they another yeah, layer of part of the Alps? Really part of the okay. Alps. Yeah. 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 So, that's what one of the trade shows was. Was like, I mean, you go out the door and you can wow. look up. <laughs> Try something, yep. So, so I will continue to work when on you need it. an assistant at one of those trade shows. <laughs> <No. laughs> I'm going to continue to work on the presentation. Okay. I have a lot of captions done as far as captioning different parts of the property record card. Okay. And then the informative pages to add to it. And uh, I'll work on setting up site visits and contacting Roy about when he can come. And that's mm -hmm. my assignment between now and next time. <laughs> Plus everything else is piled up on the desk. Yep. So move to adjourn. Second. Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor. Aye. 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 So I'll see you at uh, 719. Thanks, Veronique. Good night, Veronique. Thank you. Have a good night.